Hey, in this video, I'm going to teach you how I go from this to this. All right, so let's start breaking this information down. First of all, you do not need a wealth of knowledge to pull this off. Secondly, you do not need access to that many resources or anything. You do need a couple dollars and you do need some video editing software. That would help. But um, uh, thirdly, this is how I do what I do or how I achieve the look that I have. I didn't take any classes or, or do anything on a professional level. Um, this is just how I figured out how to do it. I am using an iPhone and an iPad to pull this off and I'm using Adobe Premiere. So if you don't have access to those things, um, well, hopefully you have, you have a camera by now, <laughs> but if you don't have access to you know, Adobe Premiere, you might be able to apply this to your software. I'm not really sure, and I can't really help too much with that because I've been doing this with Adobe Premiere for a lot of years. So, first of all, we need to talk about lighting. This is my room lighting. This is just having lights on in my room, and it does not look very good on video. It makes it look very much like iPhone footage, and of course that's what we're trying to get away from here. So, uh, these are the lights that I use, RX-8Ts. Do you need these lights? No. Um, these are, I, I wouldn't say on the expensive side, but if you go to Amazon, I think they're probably like 75 bucks a piece. Um, I got them online for $37 a piece just by looking around, uh, brand new. And uh, they go onto stands. I got cheap stands, probably 20 bucks. You can buy totally cheaper lights than this. One of the cool things about these, though, is they do um, dim, which is kind of important. And you can bend them. I, I liked the fact that you could do that, but uh, truthfully, I've never really had to do much of it. So, uh, yeah, like I said, you definitely don't need something like this, but um, some kind of an LCD cheaper light, and if they come with diffusers, that's good as well. So, I have two lights. You can do this with one light, but you kind of probably want to have two lights, and you'll see why. Now, um, normally I position my lights. One would be to a angle like this from me, or an angle like this, so that I'm lighting up one side of my face, and this is very common in film and things like that too, or uh, we don't want it to be <laughs> directly to the side of us, but we want to have, and we don't want it to be kind of right in front of us, or it's just going to light our face up. So we want to get a nice dynamic angle, like a light over here. And then the second one I'll show you is going to go kind of behind you so that it's accessing, so it, so that it's lighting up this kind of shoulder and, and popping us out from the background. So first of all, let's turn off this awful lighting up here. Now here's my first light. And it is bright. And it is pretty rough. Um, so when we talk about diffusers, and what you see me handling here is an umbrella, otherwise known as a lighting diffuser. So some diffusers are just little screens that you put on and what they do is they make the light not so harsh and they soften it so that your shadows are softened and so that everything is nice and uh, more warm and not like a spotlight on my face. Where are we? Yeah, it's just, it's very intense and if I sit here and try to do a video with that light beaming in my eyeballs, it's pretty intense. So this is a very cheap umbrella. I've had this. I know you can buy these really cheaply um, and I got a little uh, thing to put on my stand so that I can push this through there and adjust it. So let's see what the difference looks like when I put my umbrella in there. Much better. So, now, second light. Now, I, uh, you can't get too much aperture separation between your background with iPhones and iPads and things like that and blurring out the background so that you really stand out. So a lot of times what people do is, once again, they'll put a light up here just to kind of pop themselves out from the background. So let me screw this back on my stand. We have it kind of popping me out there a little bit more. And um, now the other important thing for this that we're going to go over is an app I use called Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro. F-I-L-M-I-C. Not very expensive. I think it's about 10 bucks. And then I think I bought the remote for it, 10 bucks. One of the best things you can do if you're trying to make YouTube videos and you have to do everything by yourself is you have your setup, you have your camera, and then you use a remote so that you can see what you are recording. So I can see myself and I can control the cameras and everything from here. I can also see if I'm in focus because it sucks a whole bunch of wieners when you record a whole bunch of stuff and then you find out that you weren't in focus, especially if you're giving it... You're playing instruments and you're giving it a whole bunch of energy and everything. You're like, that was great. 
It wasn't great. You weren't in focus. So don't get too intimidated. This is a simple app to use. Um, I'll show you here how I learned how to use it. Uh, it's not going to take a lot. You have to know a couple things, and that is it. So I will show you while we're recording here. So this is the Filmic Pro remote. So this is seeing what my camera is seeing up here. And I'm controlling everything with this remote. So like I said, this is an add-on to Filmic. I think it was like uh, 10 bucks or something like that. But uh, uh, absolutely invaluable tool to have when you're trying to record these things for yourself. You're going to press this little button down here. And that's going to bring up your aperture and your lens settings over here and it's going to bring up your focus you don't need to know anything about cameras just follow along last thing here is that you have your resolution you want to set that to your highest if you have room for recording that many videos you want to set your frame rate to 24 frames per second anything higher than that it starts to look weird and digital and we're trying to go for a more natural look that's pretty much all you need to know now we're going to go over here to these numbers and i've already turned this down but we were about here I'm going to bring this number down, or you can click on either one of these numbers and adjust. It doesn't really matter. We're just trying to get a more dynamic look. And we can pull it the whole way down and be really dynamic and really dark. But I'm going to bring it up just a little bit more. And there we have it. And now we look a hell of a lot more dynamic just because we controlled how much light is coming through that lens. All right! So let's get started here. I opened up Premiere Pro. I opened a new project, essentially. These were my settings. Let's call it Video 3, because I've done this a couple times now. And everything's pretty much the same as anybody else's would be set up here. So I have my video clip here. I'm going to drag that down here so I can import it. Or you can, of course, go to File, Import. And we're going to drag it over here. And there we are. Now it already looks pretty decent, like I said, we can already upload it like this, but I'm going to show you how I do what I do. So one of the first things here is something called Vashi, or Vasi Vintage. I have these uh, vintage visuals that I downloaded here, and I'm going to show you those, or I'll put a link. Hopefully they're still available. These are totally free. What it does is it ends up putting more um, focus on the person's face, or in this case, my face. So there's a bunch of different ones to choose from. They also put a little bit of a blur sometimes as well, so I keep putting these on here. You can see what that one did. Here's porthole. That's usually pretty dynamic, so I don't need it to look like I'm coming out of a tunnel. And we have a rectangle. This is usually a nice one, so let's say I go with that. Still more dynamic, but um, yeah, we have a little bit of a Gaussian blur, however you say that, and Lumetri color. So... Um, Lumetri Color, and somebody already did this. I installed these in Premiere Pro. They're presets. It was pretty easy to do. I'm sorry, I don't know how to you know, guide you through that, but of course you can figure out how to do that. And then they went right over here into my presets, and that's what I selected. So, once again, this puts a nice kind of uh, focus right on here on me talking, or if I'm playing an instrument or whatever, it puts a nice focus on there and makes it look a little bit more professional. Here's what it looks like without, and here's what it looks like with. Very nice. So those are presets. I didn't do. I don't do anything to them. I don't touch them. And uh, and if you don't want your little blur, like the little blur that happens, you can always just turn that off as well. So the second important thing I use here, and maybe the most important, is that I'm using these uh, natural things that come along with Premiere Pro, Lumetri presets. These are more presets. I usually go with faded film, Cine, Cine Space, yeah, 25 faded film. So we're gonna drag that on here. This is gonna be above your black preset thing here and let's start diving into this i do not do much i don't want you to feel overwhelmed we're going to go down to basic correction first and we're going to turn this stuff way down because we don't need our faded film to be that intense i usually go about 20 about 18 something and i'm going to show you what that does it's just giving us once again a little bit of a a more film-esque warm not so DSLR digital kind of look. If you don't know about these things, digital is very clean and very pristine, but it's also very empty. So when we um, shoot digital, uh, it ends up being very cold and kind of lifeless. So what we're doing here is we're trying to bring some more film-esque warm uh, qualities to this. And uh, once again, we already have a better quality. It's funny that just turning that on and off, somebody would probably be like, wow, what kind of camera are you using? It's really nice. Now, all I did was a couple things here. So now uh, we turned that way down. 
Let's close some of these. And now we're going to go, where the hell did we go? We're going to go to our color wheels. This is very important. You don't have to, if, if we're not using Premiere Pro, you can do this in other things. I tend to want my skin tones to be nice and warm. And then I want my backgrounds to have more color. Right now, black is pretty much black and gray is pretty much gray. So I'm going to add a little bit of color to all these things. It's going to be pretty subtle. But once again, this is the reason why everybody asks me what camera I use. Right there, we're just barely diving into blues and greens to add a little bit maybe of a vintage look but we also just want a little bit more of a of a feeling and a look so that's pretty nice let's go kind of right in here between green and blue so i can't this isn't something you can click and drag oh let's just go with that right now shadows we might want to go a little bit with our shadows but it might be a little bit too much right there Barely off center adds just a little bit more of a hue to this black color instead of just black. So then we come up here, we're going to add a little bit more skin tone, a little bit more yellow or red. And this is what I do with every video and every shot that I add or that I um, edit. I'm sorry. So those are my color wheels. Once again, let's look at the before and after. Pretty clean, looks pretty nice. Now we're getting more of a film esque kind of look. Now, if you shot it a little bit too hot or a little bit too uh, dark, we can change our exposure settings. I sometimes take my temperature and I'll, I'll even make it a little bit warmer. And I might make this a little bit colder. Well, oh, got to grab it. But anyway, once again, this is what I'm going for. And like you can change your shadows and your highlights if you want your, you know, something to stand out more. We can always bring our highlights into that. But anyway, I don't really need to change anything. I like the way that looks. And we didn't do that much. So already we have a nice look there. I don't want my audio to be playing back. So let me get rid of that. And there's my my big wonderful head. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've already achieved a really nice look. So now I'm going to show you one more trick with this. Um, just to add a little bit more of a uh, film-esque kind of quality. I downloaded something called Film Grains. And these are literal recorded film grains. And some of them are pretty intense. So we're going to go with 35 millimeter. I'm going to drag this down here. And they're actually video clips. It's not just like a weird stagnant image. And I'm going to drag this over top. Now, we have film grain. I'm going to put the blending mode under opacity to overlay. What that's doing is adding just a little bit of grain over top of this because if you were to record onto film you would have a natural grain if you were to record record uh, audio onto tape you would have a natural thing there that you're recording onto a little bit of a sound um, it can actually be hard starting to record in digital if you're recording music at first because it's a it's an empty space and it's hard to fill it up and when you're recording on tape that's not the case there's already a nice warmth there so Taking a look at what that looks like. And turning it off once again. Here's without the grain. I'll show you with the grain and without. Here's without. Here's with. Might not even be able to tell. But. Um, nice film-esque quality. Um, definitely came a long way from our beginning. Uh, so. I usually have to take this, but the only problem with this is that if you go off into the black, um, if you have like a thing you're cutting between or something like that, you're going to get back to this, which is goofy. So I use it sometimes, sometimes I don't use it. I wanted to show one more thing here I forgot about. For those of you that have never really done much of this stuff and you don't know how to export and get your video to look the best you can for, you know, let's say YouTube in this case, we're going to go here to export media. And then we have this big confusing screen that comes up. Everything I do, everything I do is in H.264, H.264. So if you're using something else, um, I, I went to college for animation. That was like a long, long time ago. <laughs> and there was a lot of different stuff we used to try to do with these things. And it was still confusing back then. But this is the setting I use, H.264. And then instead of match the source and all that, we I always go to 
um, YouTube right down here. So I think that what this does is it uses, I think, the same codecs and stuff that YouTube, YouTube does, and then it doesn't try to break your file down even worse or take the quality away. I don't mess with my width and my height. That's what all my videos are shot at and what, what's going on. Um, your audio, I mean, I pretty much keep that the same. Um, it depends on what I'm doing, but um, y you don't really need to mess with it. I don't mess with anything else, and then I click export. Uh, there are a couple things where if you don't want to do the whole thing, you can make a custom thing like this or whatnot. But either way, that's how I do it. So I wanted to jump in there and show people that as well in case you were confused. So thanks for tuning in. I hope this uh, helped out. I hope this answered a couple questions for you, and I hope that it helps you to make your, you know, your videos look better or more professional. Um, is it going to get you more subscribers or more views? I really don't know about that, but if you have something that you're trying to do that you want to represent in a more of a professional way, or you have something you're talking about that you want to be taken seriously, uh, then this kind of stuff does help. It helps your point get, a, get across. It helps you to not look like you just took a phone and went, we're going to do stuff now. So um, if you want any more tips like this, or if you have questions, I, I'll try to answer them in the comment section. Just leave me, leave me the questions. I'll do my best. And subscribe. I'm going to be putting up more and more content like this and trying to help people learn how to do what it is that I do or to achieve the sound and the look of the things that I'm doing. So, uh, so thanks, and uh, I'll see you soon.